Hello and welcome to Live in the Hive, the only online magazine show dedicated to theatre across Greater Manchester. I'm Michelle Eagleton, it's Sunday night, it's eight o'clock and for the next 30 minutes we have got some wonderful guests to entertain you. So do stay with us, you're going to find out some theatre news, we've got some great interviews of some of the stars of shows coming to our wonderful city. Now a big hello if you're watching on the I Love Manchester Facebook platform or if you're watching on the Live in the Hive Facebook platform. You can get us here every Sunday. So thank you for joining us and do spread the word. But let's get on with the show. Let's see what we've got in store for you because tonight if you are a big fan of the world of dance or the world of musical theatre then you are definitely in for a tree. We're going to have Matt Smith. He's going to be talking about Lord of the Dance. Can you believe 25 years of that epic show? And also joining me, we have got the wonderful Lizzie B, as you can see there from Sister Act, the musical, which is winging its way to the Palace Theatre from tomorrow. I can't wait. One absolute lineup that we have got for your tonight's show. And also, as every week, we deliver this. We deliver great in Manchester theatre news. We've got lots of different announcements to tell you about, which you are going to absolutely love. And a big shout out on the start of tonight's show to these guys now i am a big supporter of performers from whatever age i just think it is absolutely crucial that we kind of drive the performing arts and the stars of the future so i wanted to give a shout out to a wonderful school middleton technology school i know they've been working really really hard to present their junior musical of matilda oh, love that musical and their you have it. Mrs. Daly has been leading the theatre group there at Middleton Technology. They're performing this week on Wednesday and Thursday. So good luck to the cast there. And I might have a little bit of a vetted interest on that one because my daughter, Daisy, is Matilda. I am super, super proud of her. Super proud of what that school has achieved. And yes, I might be screaming and I might be crying and shedding a bit of a tear when I see her perform next week. But let's talk about the shows that we are featuring tonight. And first up, we have got a cracking guy. And boy, can he dance. It is Matt Smith. And I caught up with him earlier on this week to talk about the epic show that is Lord of the Dance and what it's like to be in something like that. Here's what he had to say. You say it out loud there, 25 years, crazy. I mean, I've been in the show for 12 years now. I watched it when I was a kid, when I was five years old. Um, so yeah, it's my whole life and many other people's whole lives. And does it still hold that magic for you? Because, you know, that's a long time to stay with a show. But when you go onto the stage, is that buzz still as good as it was the first time? Yeah, massively. You, you don't you don't lose that that desire and that drive and, and that passion for it every night when you hear that crowd um, get up on their feet. Nothing beats it. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm still I'm still loving it. <laughs> and there's a huge fan base for Lord of the Dance. You know, people have followed this for so many years. You'll follow it around the com country. How how has that been for you? Because you must get a lot. You know, of people waiting outside the theatres and people connecting you. What does that feel like? Yeah, it's amazing how big Irish dancing has got just just from Lord of the Dance, really. Um, we, we get to travel all around the world. Um, we've got great fans all across Europe, um, Asia, America, North and South. Um, it's crazy. So when you see everyone at that, that stage door, like you said, um, clamouring to get a glimpse of you afterwards, um, it's a surreal feeling, really, just, just from doing a bit of Irish dancing. I love that. Just doing a bit of Irish dancing. I have seen you <laughs> perform. Oh, my goodness. And aren't you one of only four people that can actually do the feet of flames dance. I mean, that's some bloody feet, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so myself, Michael, um, James Keegan, who's from Manchester, who's now a creative director as well, um, and another lad called uh, Damien. Um, so, yeah, in, in pretty good company. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it. we've said it's a, a phenomenon, but 
you know, to actually see the talent behind the dancing, you said learning from five years old, it's a lot of dedication, isn't it, to get to a standard that you are at and the rest of the company are at. Yeah, exactly that. Kind of Irish dance has now turned from what used to be a hobby in Ireland um, to now a real high octane, intense sport. Um, so myself, I would have trained five or six times a week as a kid whilst kind of juggling that with schoolwork. And at 17, I was able to turn professional. But now now kids are training seven times a week and um, extra classes, four to five hours a day, uh, training with CrossFit and Pilates and yoga and, and doing Irish dancing. It's crazy. Um, so it's really hard. A lot of dedication and commitment from not only yourself, but your family around you as well to be able to support you and, and take you all around the world and the country to train and compete. Um, so I've got a lot to thank my family for, for the help as well. Well, yeah, because, I mean, at five, to have watched, you know, that show on the telly. Was, was it on the telly, Matt, back then? Um, no, they showed me a video of the original Lord of the Dance uh, on VHS. Um, and then I connect think I to it. Yeah, and then this kind of, said, like kind of becomes your career. Did they do Irish dancing or were you just kind of the odd one out? It was like, oh, <laughs> Matt's going to be doing Irish dancing. And then you've started this whole world for you and your family. Yeah, pretty much. I was the odd one out, to be honest. <laughs> um, but my mum and dad are both from theatrical backgrounds. So I think they were kind of pushing me to do something <laughs> in the industry and just waiting to see what I kind of clicked with. Um, and oh, yeah, just I kind of said I'd like to do that. They found me a local Irish dance school and it went from there. And that went from there. And I heard that your ambition at, you know, that age and like as you follow through with Irish dancing was to be a lord. And here you are. <laughs> lord of the dance one of the lords that that must be a pinch me moment when you actually got that role yeah massively to to watch something as a kid say you kind of want to do that and then however many years it was later 12 years later be able to do that as a career um it's pretty amazing and to be able to work with michael as well who's obviously the reason i got into it um yeah it is a dream come true I know talking of Michael, obviously he is the man, the go-to man and created this complete phenomenon and, and, and the, the mass of people that are getting really into Irish dancing. What was it like when you got to meet him the first time? Yeah, um, again, I'll use that word surreal, I think, because um, you've seen this, this um, icon on screen um, for all those years and then to be able to, one, meet him, but then get to learn from him and now work with him closely. Um, yeah, it's fantastic. Uh, still get a bit nervous when he's around, obviously, because you want to impress and, you, you know, <laughs> you, you don't want to let him down, really. Um, but he's really good at making you feel comfortable and welcome. And like I said, working with you to make not only yourself better, but the show better. And haven't you danced with him on stage as well? That must have been, you know, another surreal moment. This is like, you know, your icon there. It's like me. I'm a big Barry Manilow fan, you know. Yeah. If I was on stage with Barry, I'd be like, oh, my God, is this happening? <laughs> yeah, totally. Exactly that. Um, yeah, he, he came back and managed to do um, a tour where he came on for the last couple of numbers in the show, which is great because it really got the fans going. But I was able to do one of the lead roles in that show as well. So to be able to lead that show and then have Michael come on at the end and kind of take over uh, it was fantastic. And we're going to get to see him in this production, aren't we? Because I think it's brilliant what you're doing. It's like a virtual Michael Flatley. So there's um, a piece that we call the Three Lords, which happens at the end of the show. And three Michael Flatleys come up, which is fantastic. And you get to see Michael uh, still busting out moves just like he did back in the day. <laughs> oh, my God. You know, why do not have three Michaels? You know, you don't just want the one. That's brilliant. And there's new costumes. Exactly. Uh, his new music, right? We're going to see all of that as part of the 25 years show. Yeah, exactly. So we've updated all of that. New costumes, new lighting, new production, new uh, new staging, uh, new choreography. Um, but we've tried to then keep it a little bit like the original as well. So we've got the nostalgia in there. Um, if you did see the show 25 years ago, um, you will see a couple of links to the, the original Lord of the Dance show. But then we've updated it and kind of drived it into the last decade, really. Because if no one's ever seen it before, there is a story, there is a through line, isn't there? Yeah, exactly. So um, re real easy to follow. Good versus evil, which which um, you, you can't kind of not love, really. Um, and you've got a love story intertwined there. 
Um, so uh, as you can kind of imagine, I won't spoil it for everyone, but good tends to conquer, doesn't it? Um, so that's my role in the show. Um, but yeah, all, all told through song and dance, which is great. It's always good to be the hero and not the baddie, <laughs> Matt. I can imagine it, especially like the response from the crowd. I've got to ask the question though, how many shoes do you get through whilst you're on tour? It's a good question to come at me right now, actually, because I've just, just broken a pair of shoes, so I need a new <gasps> pair. Um, but we generally try and keep the one pair of shoes we have for as long as possible because you break them in and they kind of then mold to your feet and they become like slippers and you just you just want to only have those shoes on your feet. And then when you do get a new pair, they're very stiff, um, the leather's quite hard and then you get blisters and it's really hard to break the dance shoes in. Uh, but mine have just broken, so I'm going to need a new pair, uh, which I'm Ooh, not looking so forward to doing. Is that going to be a painful couple of performances then? It is, yeah. A painful few weeks are on the horizon, I think, but we'll get yeah. to it. Do you know what? I've just been listening to Andre Agassi on a podcast and I never knew this about tennis players, but obviously, you know, they're on their feet all the time. And he was saying that before a match, he has loads of strapping that goes on and protection on his feet and like this sticky yeah. kind of liquid that, that, that actually again molds him to it. But is it just like, is it a sock or what, what do you have in that show? Yeah, so it kind of all depends on the person as well, because depending on what injuries or niggles you have, um, a lot of people will, we all get strapping before the show as well. Uh, so we have a great sports therapist that travels around with us, which we're really lucky to have. And uh, they're inundated <laughs> with 35 dancers before the show, getting strapped up and getting their ankles strapped, getting the blisters strapped. Uh, but myself, I just have a kind of insole, like a slip-on insole that goes in there and just cushions uh, that impact because for two hours you're, you're, you're hitting that floor pretty hard. So just a bit of cushioning in there. Um, and that's all I need at the minute. Touch a bit of wood. All good. That's incredible. You know, that could be because I know in your spare time, you've got a bit of a trainer addiction, right? I do. Yeah. I'm, I'm a massive sneaker head. Um, that's, that's my kind of. How many yeah, have you got, Matt? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. We, we, we did a little section on it with the show and I think I counted, 22 or 23 pairs were in the wardrobe but when you got to travel around with two suitcases <laughs> it's hard to bring all those with you so uh, I try and get back now and again and change a bit of rotation but that's quite good because at least your, your foot gets to breathe you know you take the shoes off and yeah. then you get to put the sneakers on right yeah exactly that but it's a bit hot at the minute so we're enjoying getting the sliders on or, or the flip-flops on after the show get, get a bit of air yeah, in the feet i can imagine well talking about the show obviously you know it is coming in july we are really looking forward to it what is your favorite bit in the show that we can look out for that you go god th this is a bit that i love i know you probably love all of it but there must be one light little moment yeah um it's a good question there's loads of bits um first half of the show my favorite number has got to be one called warlords uh, which is just all the lads on stage on their own and we dance a cappella, so there's no music to it but we're, we're kind of making the rhythm uh with the moves and the the um choreography so that's great a really powerful number it always gets the crowd going um and then there's a little surprising story at the end of the show as well uh which i'm not going to reveal now but it's just been added in in the new choreography um and that's one of my new favorite parts as well so look out for it Oh, I love ending on a good tease like that. I cannot wait to see what that delivers when it comes in July. It's winging its way to us very shortly. And by goodness, I think that is going to be a cracking show to go and see. And talking of shows to go and see, well, what is the latest on the news on the theatre world in our fair city? Well, we have had a great announcement for kids and adults alike this week because the Lowry Theatre has this coming back. It's the Gruffalo. Oh, brilliant. This is going to be the perfect show for the summer holidays. It opens in July. It carries on until August for a really good run at the Lowry in Salford. You must know it if you're a parent, if you're a grandparent, of course, your kids. The Gruffalo is the wonderful Julia Donaldson and Axel Schaffer book which has become 
a stage show and get this the stage show has been running since 2001 people and audiences are absolutely loving it it's a musical version and of course you see there little mouse on its journey meeting the gruffalo honestly you can't beat that family favorite and well the Oldham Coliseum has been really busy this week announcing its autumn winter lineup and I think this is absolutely fantastic too. You do need to check out the full listings if you go to the Oldham Coliseum Theatre website. You will get all the lowdown on this, but there's things like Road, um, you're going to have Robin Hood as well really diverse and exciting lineup that they've got in store there neville island you can see as well on the uh, the bottom level there the guy looking very shocked that is of course the tim firth hilarious play it's a little bit like oh the apprentice meets bear grills adventure but i'm i'm not saying any more but if you want to find out a little bit more about what they are going to be bringing to audiences in oldham for the autumn and winter season then just check out their website and talking of websites well if you want to find out what's going on in the theatre world throughout the week all you need to do is go here i love manchester has got the latest and uh, they'll also be telling you about where to go, where to eat, where to drink, anything you need to know across our fine city. They are the place to visit. And of course, you can always visit us as well because we're on Instagram and Twitter. If you're not following us, what are you doing? Give us a follow, share the love and find out what we get up to during the week. There's some exclusives, there's some behind the scenes things and, and maybe some dodgy photographs of me that you might want to see. Anyway, let's move on to our next guest this evening because she is absolutely fantastic. She's been in so many shows and now she's in such an exciting lineup for the cast of Sister at the Musical. I was really lucky to catch up with her because she was in rehearsals and uh, I pulled her out of rehearsals for the show which opens in Manchester tomorrow. So this is a little bit of a sneak peek of what you have got to look forward to. Who am I talking to? Well, the wonderful Lizzie B. And she is telling me what it feels like to be here in Manchester with Sister at the Musical. It's amazing. I mean, I love Manchester anyway. It's such a good city. Um, I've actually never been at the Palace before. I've always been at the Opera House. Um, and this theatre is so nice. It's really, really nice. And um, yeah, our set looks absolutely amazing on the oh. stage. Um, I've kind of snuck out into the audience to watch a couple of times and I think people are in for a treat. Oh, I cannot wait. I absolutely loved Sister Act when it was a movie. I've seen it before as a musical. And what I love about your production is you're bringing it to Manchester first mm -hmm. before you go to the West End, which I, I think is brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, it's really good. And I think for us as well, it gives us time to like finesse it whilst we're here um, in a city where we know the audiences are going to be really friendly and they're going to be really supportive. Um, so I think as well that people who come to see it here are going to kind of like really see the show progress whilst it's on here before we take it to London as well. Well, I've got to say we have previous here in Manchester, you know, we've had Back to the Future open here, we've had Ghost, we've had Anne Juliet, so you are in absolutely fantastic <laughs> company. We yeah. are, I've got to say, I'm biased, but we are the best audience, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> now, this version is something that I'm even more excited to see because there have been changes for 2022. Mm -hmm. So what, what are we going to see that might be different from before? I think one of the big differences is the way that it's been cast. It's been cast very differently um, to a lot of the traditional versions of the characters that people are used to in Sister Act. A lot of the cast have been cast a lot older than people are used to, which gives the show this really incredible, mature vibe. And it kind of really brings through the innocence of the younger characters as well. And it's also been cast um, kind of outside of like the traditional ways that people are used to seeing the body types or 
hearing the voices sound it's been cast really really openly and I think that when I've been looking out front it's been really joyous especially as someone in the casting bracket that I'm in to see bodies of all shapes and sizes out there I think everyone who comes to see it is going to feel really really represented and it's just like real it's real people kind of telling this story and we're still setting it in the 70s time period so it means that we're all in sometimes quite ridiculous costumes but they look incredible there's like I don't want to give too much away but a really amazing color has been chosen as like the key color scheme um it's kind of like sister actors back with a bang if you missed it the first time round this is I don't want to it might be even better than the first time round. I'm loving it. So it's not just black and white habits. You got a bit of colour going on oh, there. There might be. Yay. Well, do you know what? I was really impressed when I saw you guys deliver on the Britain's Got Talent oh, fight. I, yes. like, I love it when they have musical theatre on mm -hmm. there because I'm like, this is what it's all about. And to have a bit of a sneak peek with the cast and I know that it's changed slightly because Beverly Knight's doing it in London we've got the wonderful Sandra Marvin who yes. came here in Waitress she was phenomenal um but that must have been great to kind of show it to the audience that new version for the first time and get the response yeah it really was and it's so funny when you kind of do performances like that before you've even done the show because that was the first time we'd seen each other in our costumes. It was the first time we'd performed live together. Um, Britain's Got Talent as well. You get so well looked after and then you literally are standing in the wings. They're like, right, 30 seconds, on you go. You just do it and then you go home. And it's wow. kind of this like whirlwind experience. But it was so nice for us to kind of feel that as a group of incredible women and get to kind of know that people are really really excited to come and see it and that song raise your voice is just it's one of the best songs in musical theater there is so much storytelling within that one scene and you know you kind of have those iconic moments when you hear those nuns kind of go from <laughs> See, this is how live we are. And <laughs> it's, how you're in the it's amazing. I love it. The atmosphere. I'm soaking it up, Lizzie. You're getting all the backstage, uh, the backstage magic. Um, but yeah, it was great. And that song was so good. Um, and actually, it's different in the show. So people aren't just going to see the same performance when they come and see it. There, it's slightly different. Oh, I'm intrigued. I really, really am. Now, for anyone who hasn't seen it, where have they been? I've got to say the 1992 film was a classic with Whoopi Goldberg, but it was about Whoopi, who was jazz singer Dolores. She witnesses a murder, gets put in a witness protection scheme, and then comes to the nunnery and changes all your lives. So how does your character fit into that? And tell us a little bit about what she's like. Yeah, so I play Sister Mary Robert, who is a postulant nun at the convent. So she got dropped off there as a baby, um, left on the steps of the convent and given over to be a nun for her life. And um, she's never known anything outside of it. So when Dolores comes in and she's talking about singing in clubs, I don't even know what that is. I don't know what a bar is. I've never experienced the outside world. And we sing at the convent, but we're not the best singers. And Dolores gets asked by Mother Superior to come and sing with the choir. And um, you all will have seen on Britain's Got Talent, but my character basically discovers that she kind of has this massive okay. voice that comes out. And up until then, she's been very quiet and very shy. And... Um, the my character gets to have this amazing journey throughout the show when she kind of questions whether the convent is the right place for her if she'd rather be in the outside world or is it just that she hasn't had her calling from god yet and maybe she will have a moment that makes her realize that being a nun is what she wants to do she just needs 
that moment in her life that's going to make her realize oh I love it I do love the story it does feel really heartwarming and, and it mm. is very very funny and I've got to say with a cast that includes Jennifer Saunders and Leslie Joseph mm -hmm. how are you keeping your face straight on stage um currently I'm not really um we've all got to learn to control ourselves by Monday night because the thing is as well because they're both absolute comedy geniuses it changes all the time as well. So they catch you out with these little ad libs or these little extra things that they do, especially at the end. Like I won't give spoilers away, but there's quite serious bits at the end. And then all of a sudden it's a comedy moment and it just works so well. And with Jennifer and Leslie, that's what people want to come and see. It is every day working with them is a masterclass and probably on stage every night will be different because they'll find funny things to do and ways to maybe catch us out on stage but it's like especially Jennifer's character I would say she is so funny but equally I think people in this are going to see how incredible and serious actor she is as well mm -hmm. because as Mother Superior she does have these quite serious and quite stern moments and she delivers them just as well as the comedy and I know she was nervous about her singing but she has two kind of big solo songs in it and they're both brilliant as well it's it's honestly just incredible to be working with her and Leslie. Oh I can't wait to see her. I do absolutely adore Jennifer Saunders and again you know such a great cast that you've got and this isn't the first time you've been in a movie musical, have you? I mean, this is almost like a trend for you now, Lizzie. You've been yeah. the turn blad in Hairspray, then you've been in Heathers as well. What do you think it is about these now, these musicals that, you know, have been taken from the movie versions? I think there are just, there are some films that just really lend themselves to having songs put into them which aren't just there to go oh that'll make it a musical these songs are part of the story and they are carrying on that story you know when I think about the song that I get to sing in Sister Act the life I never led it you almost think oh the film if that had had that in it the character probably would have made more sense because a song can say so much and I also think that Heather's especially, Hairspray and Sister Act, maybe you wouldn't call them like a cult following a uh, movie or musical, but they're very, very popular films. And I think that it means that once you take them to the stage, there is that fan base there already who are going to come and support it and hopefully fall in love with the musical just as much as the film. I think all three of those, Heather's, Hairspray and... Uh, Sister Act are very, very good musical adaptations of, of films that were already very popular. Um, and I think with Sister Act, people get a bit confused because they think it's the songs from the film, but it's not. The, the music in the musical is completely different. Yeah. But it's um, it's all written by Alan Menken, who did lots of Disney stuff, so like Hunchback of Notre Dame. Yeah. Aladdin. Well, the music's brilliant. Wow. Oh. Well, I'm going to ask you and put you on the spot here. This is your last question. All right. So out of all of the cast, yourself included, who would spend the longest time in the confessional box? Oh, I feel like it would be Leslie. Honestly, I said to her the other day, I was like, you have lived a thousand lives. Like she has a story about if any person you mention, she's met them and it will always be like a crazy story. She is just, I love Leslie so much. She is honestly a living legend. And I think... Yeah, she would be in there a lot with all her crazy stories. I can see that myself. Do you know what? You are going to have an absolute ball. We are so excited to get you. We haven't got long to wait. Monday, yay! No. Praise the Lord. You will be with us. So good luck with the show. Good luck with the West End. And uh, I'll see you on stage next week. Yay! Thank Bye. you so much.
Oh, I love chatting with Lizzie. She was brilliant. And thank you so much to her for taking time out of rehearsal. She's such a busy lady right now. And I cannot wait to see Sister Act, the musical. I'm racing there. Of course, it opens tomorrow night. So good luck to the cast. I know they're absolutely gonna smash it. Now that's all we've got time for, unfortunately, tonight. Thank you so much for watching. And as I say, we are here every Sunday, eight o'clock on I Love Manchester's Facebook page and the Live in the Hive Facebook page. So I will see you for more theatre fun next week. Until then, goodbye. <laughs>